Okay, so I'm not gonna gatekeep. I'm the help, y'all. So listen to this. There's an amazing drink I want you guys to make. Listen, if you are a coffee drinker or yeah, if you're a coffee drinker or energy drink drink drinker and you're trying to like stop that, here's the thing. Nothing's really wrong with coffee, but I will tell you what the problem is with coffee. The problem with coffee is that if you drink coffee every day, when it's time for you to go into a fast, you are going to have the worst headaches. Okay, let me tell you why. There are um, two types of headaches. There is hunger headache, okay? Ca no, there's three types of headaches, sorry. <laughs> there's hunger headaches. There's withdrawal headaches, as in withdrawal from caffeine. And then there's the witchcraft headaches slash migraines. The difference between the three. The regular hunger headaches is you get a headache when you don't eat. So when you go into a fast, you'll get a headache because you haven't eaten, right? Then there's caffeine withdrawal headaches, which is if you don't drink caffeine, you'll get a headache and it will linger, literally linger until you drink caffeine or you have some sort of like sugar, okay? Then there is the witchcraft headache, which lingers all night, all day. Every time, every, it's like an annoying feeling. Okay, it, it doesn't really hurt, but it's an annoying type of feeling. An example of this is when you have like a toothache, it may not hurt as bad, but it may have an annoying type of feeling. A better example of this, because toothaches do kind of hurt. When you get teeth whitening and your teeth are very sensitive, it doesn't hurt, but it's annoying. The feeling is annoying. That is a witchcraft headache, okay? Sometimes witchcraft headaches can hurt, but once you get up and start eating and drinking and, and stuff, it will still be there, but it won't hurt, okay? That's how you'll know it's a witchcraft headache because let's just say you eat food and the headache's not gone and you drink caffeine, the headache's not gone, it's still there. That is a witchcraft headache. Okay, it will linger as in like you'll have this all day, all night and it will fade in and out. So there'll be times where you feel it fading away and then it comes back and then it fades away and comes back or it's there the whole time, but it's just the levels are fading as in like it gets a little bit lighter and then gets heavier again, it gets lighter and heavier. People always call me when I make videos. She's probably gonna call me again. One second guys, let me put this not disturb on. She called me again. So, um... Yeah, because I, I don't want to lose my train of thought, so I don't want to answer the phone. So anyways, um, yeah, so see what I mean? When it's a witchcraft headache, it doesn't go away. But when it goes, when it doesn't fade away, but it's like sometimes it's stronger, sometimes it lessens, it means that that is the force of the witchcraft, the attack that is afflicting you. It's like there's a fight going on between good and evil. You're covered, you're protected. And what they're trying to do you is trying to go through that armor that you have on. So you'll feel a lot of force, but then it will kind of fade a little bit. And then it will be forceful again and fade a little bit. So throughout the day, though, you'll feel the attempts of it. Why do you think when witchcraft is being done, you'll have moments in the day where you feel completely normal and fine. And then all of a sudden you'll feel like you will feel the pricklies on your body. Then all of a sudden your stomach starts to hurt. Not like hurting as in like gas hurting like anxiety wise and then all of a sudden you'll have the urge to poop and then you'll feel the headache starting to come back and then you'll feel the dryness of your mouth no matter how much you're drinking water all day you'll feel your mouth get dehydrated that is witchcraft what and you'll also feel like lightheaded and dizzy and you'll feel really hot even if you're in like a cool area right so that is witchcraft so right so the point of me saying this to you is to to show you guys the differences between the headaches okay if you are fighting this and you have to go into a fast and you are a coffee drinker, right? Or you are the kind of person that gets a headache, um, you know, if you don't eat, what you have to do is you have to make sure that you are taking magnesium for at least five days before you go into your fast. Magnesium will reduce, the, reduce headaches. Take your magnesium orally five days before your fast and then also make sure you are taking baths, whether it be once a week, twice a week, three times a week. You're taking salt baths um, three times, two times, once a week because the salt will absorb 
in your skin, okay? Sorry, your skin will absorb the salt other way around. <laughs> and that is another form of magnesium that will help you reduce the headaches, okay? Um, so when you go into your fast, your headaches won't be as bad because you have taken magnesium five days prior, which reduced the headaches. And you know, you have also taken the baths, or if you don't take the baths and just magnesium, regardless, you've reduced how harsh the headaches will be by taking the magnesium. So that will also help with the migraines, the witchcraft migraines. Magnesium is really good with helping with that, okay? So that will help you most likely com complete your fast because most people, the reason why they break their fast and it's hard for them to finish, it's not because they can't do it. It's because the pain of the migraine and the headaches is unbearable sometimes. Because imagine you're a coffee drinker and you get headaches without drinking. If you don't drink caffeine, you get headaches. On top of that, imagine you also get headaches when you don't eat. And then imagine also getting witchcraft headaches. You basically are being affected by three different types of headaches at the same time when you're fasting. So some people, they end up breaking their fast earlier because it's unbearable. But if you do what I told you to do where you cut, cut off, I didn't tell you guys to cut off caffeine, but cut off coffee one week before you go into a fast, take magnesium one week before you go into a fast, five days basically, but one week. Um, then what will happen is when you go into your fast, you reduced the amount of hard, hard, harshness you'll be feeling during the headaches. I mean, sorry, during the fast. Okay, see, I'm messing up a lot, but I'm not gonna edit the video. I don't have time to edit it, but this is what usually happens and I have to edit videos. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, tell you to help you during your fast, okay? Another thing I want to tell you is if you want to stop, um, cut the caffeine down so it's not as harsh, you want to go with a more type, a more less, how do I say it? A more not as harsh type of caffeine, okay? And that is matcha tea. The Lord actually showed me matcha tea. I am a matcha tea with, with oat milk drinker, but oat milk made me gain a lot of weight because I was drinking a lot of that in the morning. I love a nice, rich matcha tea with oat milk. So the Lord actually helped me make something that is more refreshing and amazing for the summertime. And I'm going to give you guys this ingredient. This will get you coffee drinkers and energy drink drinkers a break, okay? It's for So you can actually enjoy you know, still having the effects, the energy from a little bit of caffeine without actually overdoing it and causing yourself to have caffeine withdrawal. Because matcha tea will will actually, it's like a healthier type of caffeine where you don't actually get withdrawals without it, right? So the ingredients are you want to get one whole organic lemon, okay? And then you want to get about one to two cups of water okay one to two cups of water depending on how much you want to make one to two cups of water one whole lemon then you want to get like two teaspoons of matcha and then you want to also get mint leaves okay some mint leaves then you want to get a little piece of ginger okay you may you may want to chop the ginger up or you may want to like um either chop it up and like crush it or try to get the juice out or you may want to just um however way you want to get the ginger juice out however you want to get it okay then you want to get a blender so you want to blend the water the matcha okay the lemon juice from that one lemon okay and the mint and then the ginger you want to blend it all up in the blender and then you want to strain it into a cup or a jug okay once you strain it you add your ice and then you add actually before you add your ice you add your stevia not sugar you add your stevia usually for that amount I'll put like two little packets of stevia um, or you can use one and depending on how much you're drinking if you're drinking one cup one stevia if you're drinking two cups two stevias right there you go and then you put your ice and then you have your little refreshment drink that you can drink throughout the day I promise you this is actually way better than energy drink this is way better than coffee. Like you will be jumping up and down throughout the day. This is like the drink that I drink every morning. And because I have cut out the oat milk and stuff from the matcha tea, I've lost a lot of weight. So this is actually a pick-me-up that I drink throughout the day. Um, and it keeps 
it's so much better than coffee and it just keeps me energetic and everything like that right so anyways and guess what like drinking this and taking my magnesium daily I don't really get witchcraft headaches like that like if I get it once in a while it's usually when they're doing really strong witchcraft but to be honest it usually goes away like after a day or two you see what I'm saying so but during my fast my fast I don't have as much headaches because I've been taking my magnesium so I want to show you guys the importance of magnesium I love you guys bye